Let's see. It's Christmas coming up and I just had a surgery. Who wants a trash miss? Hello, hello, my fishies. It's December. And, well, you know where you are. Welcome to the Fire Tuna Club. My name's Kat. And my crafting budget for this month is zero. So let's see what I can make for Christmas for my doll scene without actually spending any money. My first trash item is going to be using stuff of doll packaging. I think this one's specifically Rainbow High. Also some duct tape. You'll also need some sticks. I did have these lying around on my desk. You can go outside and get these. Um, you'll need a doll for measuring and size ratios. Uh, as well as hot glue and other random trash things. Keep in mind this is kind of a what you have on hand kind of project, so don't be afraid to try something else. You'll want to cut your doll packaging at the corners, measure three centimeters out at every corner. I used the corners that were already built in so that I didn't break them trying to put them in. So just for reference, the total cut should be 8 centimeters by 6 centimeters. I cut 4 pieces, technically you only need to cut 2. I wanted extra stability, so I doubled up the corners. Tape all your pieces together using your duct tape. You should end up with a nice tall square base to put your sticks in. Now comes the hot glue. To prevent hot glue from sticking to the sides of your box, you'll want to just pour a big old glob of hot glue on your non-stick mat, press your box into the hot glue, and wait for it to cool. If you press it down properly, the outside should peel right off. Next we'll want to decorate these sticks some. You don't have to, but if you do, you'll want to start with a layer or two of gesso to make your paint more even later. I followed up with about two or three layers of silver paint. It's entirely up to you. Once you're done with the painting, it's time to raid your bedazzling box. If you've got beads, get them. If you got glitter, get them. If you got nail polish, you probably want to get that too. As I said before, this project is a make something with what you've got. I originally found these like ivory cream colored fake pearls. And they just really didn't work, so I got everything and put it on the table and sat down and thought. Which ultimately led me to the idea to frost my sticks with some white powder to make it look frosted. Sorry, white glitter. So this is a very easy thing. You'll want to have paper under it to gather all this bare glitter. I dunked my sticks into the glue. You can just smear some glue on. And then put the glitter on the stick, let it dry, tap it off, repeat the process until you're happy with how much glitter you have on your sticks. And don't forget to put your glitter back up before you have an accident. I'm not saying that out of experience. That being said, assemble your little doll decor and set it aside somewhere safe where your wild things of the house cannot knock them over and have you picking up beads off the carpet for an hour. Let's keep this trash miss going. Get your cereal boxes, paperboard, chipboard. You know you're ordering gifts off Amazon. You will need the cardboard. Save it. To also avoid spending the next five minutes explaining my cuts, you can check out the firetunaclub.blogspot.com. It will have a cut list. Or you can just pause the video now. And on to the next part. Off screen, I did assemble the base together as seen here. Get your two cuts of the lower front and your four cuts of the lower sides, and you'll want to glue them together as seen here. You should end up with two legs to the fireplace. Legs is what I'm going to call them. And if you mess up like I did, some of you did notice, you can course correct by trying to fix it or just get your next Amazon shipment and cut a new piece. Let's keep the glue train rolling by gluing your upper pieces, which are basically the top and bottom of the fireplace top, to your upper front. 
Once the glue has set there, get your upper sides, take everything you have, go off camera and glue the upper sides to the upper top area that you have going on. Get your lower legs and attach them to the upper piece, making sure that you use whatever your surface is to make it as flat and straight as possible. This is also the point where you'll probably have noticed the support cardboard that I put in between the pieces. This is a necessary part. You can put the supports wherever you want. I arranged them in such a way so that I could tuck battery packs into them and hide them in the scene. With the core of your fireplace done, cut out your brick wall based on the measurements and then trace the inner part of your fireplace so you know where to lay your bricks as well as marking where your supports are so you can use them as more support for the brick wall, as well as to not put bricks there. Set it aside and we'll attach it later. You'll want to follow all this up by covering the entire fireplace with some cardstock. It's not necessary, but I like to clean it up like hiding all the seams and covering all the visible corrugation with the cardstock. Color is irrelevant, we're going to be painting this Hey, you guys might remember these scrap pieces from the last video. This was supposed to be a thing for the witch house, but now it's working for our trash mish projects. So you'll want to do the long process of cutting out around 200 bricks. And yes, I did eventually wise up and started using my Cricut. Once you have all your bricks glued in place on your fireplace, you'll want to go ahead and start painting. I do start out with a base coat of gesso with a bit of clear glue mixed in to add some stability and make sure that everything's glued down well. Cover your fireplace in that. Once you've fully covered your fireplace in the base coat gesso, you'll want to get four different kinds of reds. I believe I chose real red, spiced berry, burnt umber, and Christmas red. And honestly, at this point, this is how you should set it up and just kind of mix the reds as you go so that no two bricks are alike next to each other. At this point, I did take some time to clean up a couple of my mistakes, putting the lines back in. You can leave it as is or weather it with some washes. For example, my flavor of weathering was covering the fireplace in soot. For the mantle, I cut two pieces of foam board seven and a half by an inch and three quarters, and one piece that was eight and a half by two and a quarter. Now, keep in mind, I obviously piece this together. It's perfectly fine. They, the mantle pieces support themselves. To make the mantle look extra sharp and crisp, I did use cardstock. I also used my handy dandy dotting tool from my clay tools to help myself score the paper to get a nice clean fold. Once everything has been glued down on that first piece nice and proper, go ahead and cover the other pieces. Uh, um, that's not right. Let's fix this. Now that you have both pieces covered, as you can see, I didn't cover them completely. Uh, glue them together and you have the mantle. Decorate it, paint it, or cover it in different color cardstock to your heart's desire. And basically you can put your fireplace together now. Um, maybe we should get on to the next project. 2021's Christmas project was making a Christmas tree out of garland ties. I had a pack and a half left over, so I figured this year our project would be to make a wreath. Get two garland ties, flip one up, keep the other one down, twist them together until you get them completely twisted. Be sure to fluff out the um, synthetic material so it looks fuller, and then tie them into a circle. I hope you haven't put your beading box up yet, because you're going to need it. And don't worry, just to prove how much I did the whole work with what you got, you don't see any red beads that are a good size, do you? And here's the thought that I had eventually that I really leaned on. So using some cream colored pearls, some crimson red alcohol ink, 
as well as some green floral wires. Twist some of those beads onto some wire repeatedly. There seems to be something wrong with this camera. Hang on. <sighs> there we go. Now where was I? Right. Repeatedly, you want to put those beads on the wires. Careful not to stab yourself and make yourself bleed. You don't want to get the beads red that way. You'll also then want to put them in clusters of three together. And then strategically place them around your wreath. If you're like me, you made six when you only needed four. That's okay. Save them for next time. I'm kind of a messy painter, and alcohol ink is kind of unforgiving. <laughs> so I painted it off screen and let it adequately dry. At this point, you'll want to weave your beads into your wreath. And if you want to hang it with some sticky tack, that's fine. Or you can do what I did, get some extra floral wire, some scraps of ribbon, and make a cute little bow to hang it off the wall with. Just be sure to eyeball the ribbon placement before you weave your wire into the wreath. You're going to want to skip this next project if you're not willing to work with electrical circuits and if you don't have a soldering iron. Don't worry, you won't be working with any heavy voltage. No one's going to get hurt. You might blow some LEDs though. The supply list for this one is kind of extensive with all the additional tools, so just pause here to see the full list. Otherwise, let's continue. Start by cutting six chipboard circles with a diameter of two and a quarter inches or proportional to whatever lamp you might be making, as well as cutting an adequate sized hole for the paper roll or straw that you happen to be using. You can do this with an awl or if you have the right size uh, hole punch, you can do that as well. Rescue a small clear cap from a pill bottle cap that looks like that. You can use a pin vise to put the hole in your cap, or if you're impatient like me, you can just brute force it. Heat also happens to melt plastic in case you want to try a different method. You can also use flush cutters to tidy up the melted plastic. Next, you'll want to prep your paper by cutting a 2 inch strip of paper that is long enough to wrap around your cap. I would recommend using glue for this next part if you have a plastic and paper friendly glue. However, I was pressed for time and used duct tape, which worked in a pinch. I did use a little bit of glue on the last part to avoid having tape visible from the outside. I rescued a working fairy light from a strand of half burned out lights that I had for experimenting purposes. And I also rescued some Christmas light wire from a pair of very unsafe Christmas lights that got very hot. Please note that if your fairy lights are waterproof, you will have to strip off the coating that makes them waterproof so that this works. Once I've finished all my testing to make sure everything works, I do solder my LED to my Christmas wires off screen. Safety first, folks. I didn't want to put a hole in my table or set fire to my house. With the wiring largely done, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the bottom pieces. I'm going to make sure the little slit I cut out is big enough for the wire to fit through on three of the six pieces. Three will stay whole, three will be cut. You will also take a little notch out of the straw just to make sure that the wires can slide through. And at this point is when we will be able to assemble the lamp. Stack all your pieces together and glue them in place. Check that your wires will still fit through before the glue dries. Slide your straw through the center hole. Make sure that your notch lines up with your wire cuts. And then I use hot glue to just get it stuck in place. And then I follow up with some tacky glue later to keep it from leaning and falling all over the place. And then you want to feed your wire through the entire fixture. Might take a little bit of wiggling, but it is doable. Don't forget about that grommet, it goes here, you'll want to glue it to the top of your straw base so that your lampshade can slide on and off. I did this so I could make interchangeable lamp tops. Lampshades? Lampshades. Interchangeable lampshades. Get two pieces of ribbon that will wrap around the top of your lampshade and the bottom of your lampshade and paint them a matching color to your lamp stand. 
Once you've painted the ribbon and the lamp stands, you'll want to glue the ribbons onto the lampshade. Once all that's dry, all you have to do is use your DuPont connectors on your wire and your battery pack, and you should be able to make something you can add or remove from a doll scene relatively easily. Yes, I know I didn't cover the DuPont stuff. I'm unable to explain that well enough for a beginner such as myself, so check out DuPont connectors somewhere else on YouTube. That being said, uh, I'm actually running out of time. Christmas is a week away. Um... I have so many more things I want to show you, but I'm just going to set up the scene, tell you some of the other things I worked on, and if you want me to go ahead and make a video for those objects, comment below and let me know, okay? So here are some of the additional objects and the final scene. Not bad for a no-budget doll setup, right? Hope you guys have a great December. With 2023 just around the corner, I need to get going, but I'll see you all when I finish another project.